All right, I think we are uh, live now. Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, we're just about to get started here. Justin Trudeau is about to do an address, uh, something he does rather frequently, but uh, something I noticed a little bit different today is that Christian Freeland, the finance minister, is going to be joining him. Now there might be some comments here made about some of the questions that we have with the budget going forward, um, what kind of legislation is coming forward, if they're going to apply anything differently now that the budget has actually passed through the, uh, the House of Commons, at least the first process, right? So uh, we're actually just just going to dive right in here because I've noticed they're they're getting started. So let's let's take a listen in. All right, I've got it on double speed here. All right, here he is, and we'll go to uh, normal speed. Oh, okay, something's up with the audio. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it was just Morning, him. everyone. Bonjour à tous. Je suis heureux d'être ici aujourd'hui avec la vice-première ministre Freeland, la ministre Anand, hey everyone, ainsi que la docteur Tam et le docteur. How's it, how's it going? Uh, I'm going to keep it a low volume until uh, we get into the English because my French isn't that great. But it's good to see you guys in chat. Uh, we've got Eva and Kevin and Ashley and Bart. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Um, yeah, so there's, there's some questions about what is actually going to be announced here or if there's going to be any new announcements. But it is a little bit odd that Christopher Freeland's involved in this. Um, okay, here. Another productive meeting. We talked about vaccines, testing, and what we can do to beat this third wave. We also talked at length about borders. Premier Ford asked that we suspend the arrival of international students. Because at this time, Ontario is the only province requesting this, we're happy to work more narrowly with them. We'll be reaching out to their officials today to formalize that hmm. request. Again, I want to be clear, this is not the time to travel. On land borders, as a reminder, anyone who comes to the U.S. land border has already been tested in the U.S. in the last three days. Then they have to get tested again. And everyone has to quarantine for two weeks and do another test on day eight. We're enforcing very severe consequences for anyone breaking these rules. Yesterday, in addition to all this, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland provided an update on the budget as well. Okay. I also took the opportunity to congratulate Premier Silver of Yukon on his re-election. I look forward to continuing to work with him on everything from the fight against climate change and creating affordable childcare to our commitment on building a stronger relationship. Wonder if they're going to give us details on that budget update that Christopher Freeland gave in that provincial uh, meeting so we can yesterday. discuss these priorities further. As I told everyone around the table last night, it's vital that we keep working together. We're following the situation with this third wave closely, especially in places that are hardest hit. Yesterday, Alberta reported their highest single day total since the beginning of the pandemic. Premier Kenny announced new restrictions to slow the spread of the virus, and our government is ready to work with the province to provide support. For Ontario, Medical teams from the Canadian Armed Forces began arriving in Toronto on Tuesday night, including critical care nurses who will work in the ICUs. This first deployment of 55 members of the forces will be providing assistance to Sunnybrook Hospital and its mobile units. On Tuesday as well, a healthcare team from Newfoundland okay, and Labrador. I think we have a little, we have a little bit here that we can scroll through. I want to get Canadian to any updates on the budget and what's happening on that front. Support we're also engaging with other provinces that are hit hard by this third wave to see how we can help. We're ready to send any resources needed to protect you and your family. And of course, we're continuing to deliver PPE, rapid tests, and vaccines. So far, we've distributed more than okay. 50. We'll mark another right, and major <laughs> ramp up. We will continue to work with provinces and territories to get these doses to Canadians as quickly as possible. So some of the questions that were looking to be answered, and I'm, like the reason I'm live streaming this is because Krista Freeland is going to give an update, and this is likely one of the first live um, updates that she's actually been involved in since the budget has made its way through the House of Commons. Now, uh, you might already know that the, the budget that was released had included a whole bunch of different changes for CRB uh, and changes for different programs here in Canada. 
Um, I'm just listening in to see if they're changing to English. Uh, so, so we're expecting some answers on those because there are some questions and they still need to bring in legislation to make some of those changes a reality. They can't do it all just because the budget has now passed. So it's going to be interesting to see like how are they actually going to implement the things that they said are going to be in the budget. That's what we're really listening into. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I see you, Iris. Thanks for the kind words. And Mike and Kelly and Anne, thanks for tuning in. C'est à travers ce, cette pandémie et revenir un peu à la vie qu'on avait avant. Au début de cette crise, on a... Okay. So the one interesting thing is when they do these press conferences, sometimes they don't announce as much during the actual press conference, but they always open it up to questions from reporters afterwards. So that's actually where there's... Just a few minutes oh, ago, yeah, English. <laughs> Finance Minister Freeland introduced the Budget Implementation Act in the House of Commons. Oh, this is this the is... next step forward on the plan we laid out in last week's budget. That's big. A plan to get through the pandemic, create jobs, and make sure our economy comes roaring back. This bill includes extensions of support programs that have been a lifeline for millions of Canadians, from the wage subsidy and the rent subsidy to the Canada Recovery Benefit and the Recovery Caregiving Benefit. We're facing a very serious third wave. So we need to make sure we can deliver support to the workers and businesses who rely on these programs. Of course, that's not all this plan lays out. With this legislation, we're also setting the foundation for strong economic growth, with er funding for early learning and childcare, support for students, a $15 federal minimum wage, and much more. I'll let the finance minister go into more detail in a moment, but here's the bottom line. These measures will help you get through what is hopefully the last stretch of this pandemic. This is about how we set ourselves up for a stronger, faster recovery that includes everyone. So all parties need to work together in, to get this support through the House of Commons to Canadians as soon as possible. En terminant, Okay, so that's actually a pretty big announcement. I wasn't expecting that today. Um, so Christian, well, like, like I was saying, the budget that was passed through the House of Commons, well, that was just supported in general by the House of Commons. Now that that has passed, they need to actually bring a bill forward to make the changes they want to make. And now it seems like we're going to have access to that bill. It's going to answer questions about CRB, what the extension is going to look like. Are they actually going to be able to get this bill passed in order to lower the amount that people are receiving on CRB? Some of these other programs, the $15 federal minimum wage, these are some big changes and uh, like a budget just being presented doesn't mean anything. This is the important part. This is the bill. This is where we're going to actually get the details on what's going on here. So so I'm very surprised that, that that's actually coming out today. Uh, and I'm listening in here for when it goes back to English. So don't worry, we're not going to miss anything. Hey everyone, we've got Christine and Nancy. Nancy, thank you for, I'm glad you hopped in the course there. Uh, make sure to hop in the private Discord too because I'm sort of shaping what's in the course around what people specifically want so you can have some input on what's going on there too. Oh, here's English. Working together to rebuild a safer, healthier Canada and a stronger, more resilient economy that leaves no one behind. Before I pass it over to Deputy Prime Minister Freeland, I want to extend my deepest condolences to the families friends and victims of the tragedy at Mount Meron. Canada stands with the people of Israel and the Jewish community. Merci. Christian. Maybe we're going to get more details here. Okay. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Premier ministre. Uh, Aujourd'hui, j'aimerais répéter certains des principaux piliers du budget de 2021 et certains aspects Aspect où le projet de loi C30 permettra... Hopefully she repeats this in English, but she's basically saying today they're implementing the Implementation Act for the budget. We see Ruth and family in here, Kelly and Ice and Fire Obsidian. Yeah, Ice and Fire, I did see that. I actually made a video about it yesterday um, with some more details on that. It's something interesting to, to follow. Yeah, Underground P, based on this, it seems like there is going to be an extension for the CRB. Okay, here, let's listen in. I'll, I'll answer your question in a moment. 500,000 new training and work opportunities for Canadians. We're making a historic commitment to early learning and childcare. 
$30 billion over five years, reaching $9.2 billion every year in permanent investments. Within five years, families everywhere across Canada should have access to high-quality childcare for an average of $10 a day. Et je veux encore une fois remercier le Québec. Okay, so sort of just rehashing what's inside of this budget and what's going to be try be inside of this budget implementation act. Once we're done here with the press conference, we're going to open up that bill and see if we can find it and get access to it and see if there's any changes based on what was in the budget itself that we covered last week and what they actually are going to implement. Because they can say a lot in the budget implementation like phase, but like unless it's in the act and it actually gets passed through, well then nothing actually actually happens, right? More than 350,000 low-income student borrowers will have access to more generous repayment assistance. <laughs> right, Eva? Nous proposons d'élargir l'allocation canadienne pour les travailleurs et investir 8,9 milliards de dollars sur six ans en soutien supplémentaire aux travailleurs à faible revenu. Cela offrira un complément salarial à environ un million de Canadiens supplémentaires et sortira près de 100 000 personnes de la pauvreté. I'm, I'm trying to listen in a little bit here because it seems like she's only saying each like once. She's not repeating herself in both languages. To help small businesses recover and grow, this budget contains a new Canada Recovery Hiring Program that will run from June to November and provide up to $595 million to make it easier for businesses to bring back laid-off workers or to hire new ones. We will also invest up to $4 billion to help up to 160,000 small and medium-sized businesses buy and adopt the new technologies they need to grow and become more productive and more competitive. And we'll encourage businesses to invest in themselves by allowing for immediate expensing of up to $1.5 million of eligible investments by Canadian-controlled private corporations in each of the next three years. Wow. These larger deductions will million. support about 325,000 businesses in making critical investments. Enfin, nous accordons un soutien ciblé aux So she's kind of just like rehashing what um, what was inside of the budget that she announced. Maybe these are the the indicators of what's actually inside of this bill because certain things in the budget can't be implemented right away or likely won't be. Again, we're going to go into the details of what's in this bill, what this means for you, um, and what they're actually going to take forward here through now into the legislative process. We're, we're, we're going to go into more details here because we can watch the press conference all we want, but it's important to get into the actual text of what's going on here. Yeah, Underground P, hello from Peterborough. This is getting confusing. Is the CRB being extended? It's still at 19 periods right now, but in the budget they proposed a potential extension, but also a potential lowering of the amount people will receive each month. But we're going to get into that when we look into the bill a little bit more that was just introduced. Track ...towards higher growth, towards greater prosperity, and towards a clean, green future. The Budget Implementation Act, tabled today, is the first major step in delivering on this plan. As the Prime Minister said, it also includes extensions and expansions of critical COVID-19 support programs for businesses and for people, including the wage subsidy, the rent subsidy, and recovery benefits. These supports are vital, as I have heard in round tables across the country this week. And these supports will continue to be vital until the virus is beaten. The legislation also takes significant steps to drive future growth, investing in our social infrastructure and our physical infrastructure, in our human capital and in our physical capital. When enacted, this budget will make a measurable difference in the lives of millions of Canadians. I very much hope that our colleagues across the aisle will consider this legislation with the seriousness and indeed the sense of urgency that Canadians need right now. 
Thank you. Okay. So Et maintenant, je pense que je donne la parole au nos docteur. Oui, Monsieur le Premier ministre. I think oh, he has um, his mic off. <laughs> okay, so likely they're going to go in. Now, usually in these press conferences, I'm going to mute it here for a second. Usually in these press conferences, they go back to the, the doctors here where they just give you an update on what's happening numbers wise. So I'm going to keep that up on my monitor here. Um, and when they go to the reporter questions that are going to happen in this room, likely after the medical, uh, uh, the, uh, the doctors answer and provide their update, well, we're going to flip back and just see what the reporters have to say. But let's let's talk about what, what just happened, right? Uh, and thanks for everyone who's tuning in in the chat. I love to see you in there. It's great to get to know all of you. If you haven't already done so, make sure to like this stream. It helps it get out to more people. We're going to be live probably for about another half hour, and we're going to go into this new bill that's just been tabled in the House of Commons called the Budget Implementation Act. The Budget Implementation Act. That's what is what's going on today. Um, for the first time, Christopher Freeland, now after last week, having the, the budget, or actually maybe perhaps it was on Monday, uh, either late last week or early this week, the budget in in general was uh, like they they had a motion uh, regarding the budget where everyone had to voice their support or uh, their opposition to the budget now the liberals in the NDP voted in favor of the budget and everyone else voted against the budget but because of the way the numbers work out right now all the liberals need is the NDP to pass the budget um, but this first step, the ways and means is what they call it in the House of Commons. Well, it's only for general support of the budget. So now they've got that general support. And today, Christopher Freeland is bringing in this new bill, this Budget Implementation Act that we're going to dive into here shortly and figure out what's exactly inside of it. What are they actually prioritizing to do first? And what is the exact language of it? Well, that's exactly what has been tabled today for the first time. So we're going to find that in a moment and maybe uh, get a broad view of what this bill could be. And then, of course, on the channel, I'm going to keep you updated with what's actually inside of it, what's happening, if there's going to be any votes. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to answer a couple questions here in chat before we go back to the questions from the reporters in the room. I see XXX Windsor, Windsor saying zero talk of CESB. Yeah, it seems like there's no um, benefits going to students in terms of cash payments like you've seen from the CRB and from the, the CERB formerly, right? We haven't seen a, a student benefit like that since this CESB ended, I believe back in September, if I remember co correctly. So no talk of that program being um, uh, revived anytime soon. Yeah. Hey everyone, yeah, I see a Delise and That Blonde Life. Does this include the 300 payment for CCB? No, that's part of Bill C-14, uh, and that's actually in the Senate right now. So once the Senate gets finished with it, it goes back to the House of Commons, and then it becomes a reality. Likely, it's not going to get held up in the in the Senate. So if, in all effective purposes, it seems like that uh, CCB, the Canada Child Benefit expansion, it seems like that's going to actually happen. It's very close to 100% certainty right now, so long as the Senate doesn't see a major problem with it. Yeah, Susie says lowering CRB is senseless. People are going to lose their homes. Yeah, maybe in some cases. It, it, it's 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 interesting to watch what they're doing here. Pixel says Canadian government is going to make my drug use seem normal to deal with their garbage and lies. Yeah, some people are, are quite frustrated with the way things have been going lately. Um, if if they're going to lower, yeah, see, they should give it. Yeah, maybe. Underground P says, thanks, Russell. Honestly, I found your videos at the beginning of the uh, pandemic and haven't missed one video since. You've got my family and I through. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad that it's been helpful. That's that's my goal with all of this, to to uh, be as helpful as I possibly can. Because I know some of this government speech and some of the programs and, and even like in the, some of the sort of um, tertiary areas that I cover here on the channel, real estate and investing, it can be so filled with just jargon and, and they say it in such way, like such confusing ways that it could be really simplified. So that's... That's my goal here is to make it a little bit more clear on what's actually going on and to present that in a, as unbiased a way as possible so you can make your own decisions about these sort of political things and then also like be able to take advantage of some of the investing um, uh, thoughts that I, that I bring on the channel as well and largely covered in the course that you can find in the link in the description. Yeah, CRA's down today. I'll have to look into that. Uh -huh. Sister Bobo says, hi, Russell, thanks for your help. Thank you for, for tuning in. And as a reminder here, I'll flip over to it. We've just got the, the um, 
health officials doing their update. They just update on COVID numbers. Um, uh, for, for our purposes on the channel, we're waiting to hear more questions about the budget. So I've got this up on my second window here. Uh, and we're going to flip back to it when we get back to reporter questions. Um, maybe it's going to reveal a little bit more about what's inside of this bill. But then again, after we get through these reporter questions, we'll dive in and see if I can get my hands on that bill that's being announced today to implement portions of the budget. Uh, so we're going to see what's actually what's actually moving forward here. Yeah, Flower Boy, there is a CERB extension in, or a CRB, not CERB, but a CRB extension inside of the budget. It seems like that's going to be in this new act that was just tabled in the House of Commons. So now it's starting at least to go through the first stages of the, um, through the first stages of the legislative process. Now, when Christa Freeland brought forward like a mini budget, the fall economic update, well, it took like three or four months to finally get this through all stages. And that's the one with the CCB. That's the one that's now in the Senate. So that was announced at the end of November and now it's only through the Senate. So this can take a while, but uh, uh, Christa Freeland is certainly hoping that this new act that she's bringing forward will be implemented really quickly. Hey, Salima, Salima Falali. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Hi, Russell from Edmonton. Love your content. Keep up the good work. Thank you for tuning in. EI extension, we're not seeing anything in terms of a longer amount of an extension for EI, but we are seeing a longer amount of time that um, people are going to be able to qualify for EI based on the looser regular, the looser guidelines not looser eligibility requirements for the EI that happened since uh, since September. So they're likely extending that inside of this bill, but not an extension of more weeks. Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, Sumathi. Uh, any business grants? Nothing federal here um, uh, that... Okay, so uh, there are there are a couple things here in the federal budget that will be for businesses, some certain tax write-offs for certain investments, as well as extensions of certain business supports, but no like um, business grants that I know of, unless you're specifically hiring students. They have a Canada Recovery Hiring Plan, which we can dive into a little bit more, but it's likely, it's unfortunate phonetic um, short form, CRHP, you'd probably call that crap if you're calling everything else CERB, but uh, that's the new kind of recovery hiring program. Uh, so well, we can dive into that a little bit more, but it's supposed to give money to employers for hiring more, more employees. So yeah, interesting stuff in here. Interesting stuff. I'm, while this is up, I'm going to flip, flip right here. So you can, uh, oh, this is the, the French portion. What we're going to do is I'm going to look up on the other thing, uh, see if I can find the bill itself so I can get some more information. For, for you guys might be interested in this. This is how I get my, my information, right? There's this website called uh, Legisinfo, and it's something that um, the government made so that people could have access. Actually, I'm going to let me let me window this and put it over here so that I can know when we go back to questions. But this is something you might be interested in. I'll turn chat off for a second on the screen. Um, yeah, so this is what I use to get all the information on what's actually inside of the bills. If you are, are ever interested in looking into it for yourself, it's not the most uh, glamorous website or most fun read, but you can find all the individual bills in on this website, Legis Info. Uh, so it's legislative info, right? So we're looking at the new bill that was just tabled. Um, so that's going to be... Uh, it's going to be a C and then a low number under 100 uh, because of who's implementing it. So, but it's likely going, yeah, okay. So it's probably the last one. Yes, right here, okay. This is the one, this is the one. An act to, let me zoom in for you. An act to implement certain provisions of the budget tabled in parliament on April 19th, 2021 and other measures. So it's, it sounds like based off of the title that it, this is going to be one of those bills that uh, it tries to push a whole bunch of things through all at the same time. Now this can take a longer time because the debate is so much longer on topics like these uh, because there's so much more. To, to cover. All right. But so again, as a reminder, I've got the press conference up here on my other monitor. So we're going to bring it back up when it gets to some more budget related stuff. And hopefully this is helpful for you. Uh, let's go in here. And this is the actual bill. And it'll, it'll tell you, um, oh, it says the electronic version of the bill is currently not available. Huh? Introduction and first reading at the House of Commons. So it's being introduced today. 
Interesting. So usually, usually when I'm on this website, uh, after a bill, I guess because this is so new, Bill C-30, this is the new budget bill that we got to keep our eyes open for, Bill C-30. But it's, okay, we're back to questions here. We'll, we'll get into this for a second. Let me pull back up this, uh, this press conference and we can listen in. Operator, over to you. Thank you, merci. Please press star one if you have a question. S'il vous plaît, appuie sur étoile one si vous avez une question. La première question de Raymond Fillon, TVA. La parole est à vous. Merci. Bonjour, Monsieur le Premier ministre. Il y a une manifestation contre les mesures sanitaires qui est prévue demain à Montréal près du stade olympique. On nous dit que ça va perturber la vaccination. I've got to find a stream somewhere. Maybe CBC does it or something. I've got to find a stream that does the translation, right? For now, let's listen in and see if we can, what we can make of désolant. it. Euh, de voir euh, des gens réagir comme ça. Je comprends que c'est des moments difficiles par lesquels nous passons tous. Euh, il y a beaucoup d'anxiété, beaucoup de, de frustration euh, parmi nous tous euh, de, ce, de ces mesures de santé publique. Mais ces mesures sont là pour nous protéger, pour protéger nos travailleurs de première ligne, pour protéger nos aînés, pour protéger nos enfants, pour protéger notre communauté. Et nous nous devons de continuer d'écouter euh, nos experts en santé qui nous disent que euh, de se faire vacciner le plus rapidement possible, de continuer à porter le masque, de d'éviter. Okay, it's a, qu a question about the severity of the third wave. It sounds like um, he's saying he's going to keep on vaccinating uh, to try to get out of this third wave. Normalité dans nos vies tous les jours le plus rapidement possible. This is this is my poor broken grade grade 9 French level <laughs> translation. Sont en train de contribuer à la prolongation de ces mesures de santé publique euh, de des mesures restrictives dans lesquelles euh, nous nous retrouvons maintenant. Alors, je demanderai à tout le monde de faire Oh, does Global part, News have an English translation? Attention, de réduire Thank you Alex. Let me see if I can find that. C'est comme ça qu'on va passer à travers. Just a second, Raymond. Yeah, he wants to know in English. Oh, well, he's going to say it again in English. It is uh, really troubling uh, to see uh, people continuing uh, and intending to come together and demonstrate against uh, spreading further cases. Oh, that's of such a that's a bad audio quality. Okay, I'm going to stay on this for for now. Measures. Of course, uh, freedom of speech and freedom of assembly and the ability to uh, express your opinions continues to be extremely important even and especially during a pandemic, but it must be done safely. The irony here is that by gathering, uh, people are putting each other at risk, uh, spreading further cases of COVID-19, and extending the time in which we will have to be faced uh, with uh, restrictions and, uh, and public health measures. We know people are tired. We know people are frustrated. Everyone is feeling this way. But the better we are at hanging in there a few more weeks, at getting vaccinated quickly, at uh, making sure we're continuing to avoid gatherings, keeping our contacts low, being careful, wearing a mask, using the COVID app, these are the things that are going to get us back to normal as quickly as possible. Uh, and I know that's what we all want. Man, I think that that's something that everyone can at least, no matter where you stand political spectrum wise, is like, Everyone, I think, feels so done with the way things have been for the past year. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's another French question, so I am going to pull up that, um, that this is the global stream. time in which we will have to be That, he's like a robot. That over a year ago, here's the translation. Basically all of our borders to travelers, so only Canadians, permanent residents, and essential workers, or exceptional cases, can cross the border. So that's a reduction of about, there's only 5% of travelers are actually getting through the border uh, now. Despite that, we need strong, uh, stringent measures. So Talking about how, how they have the strongest measures and they're going to make changes here in Ontario. One thing that frustrates me on these live streams, it's like, it's these major production value companies doing it, like Global and CBC and CPAC are covering it. It's like, you think that you could get your uh, translation levels right. Like, this is a little bit hard to make out because of the levels. Going to quarantine for two weeks, they will then be tested the third time on day eight of that quarantine. These measures are being closely monitored by the authorities with extremely harsh penalties for people who don't 
par rapport à la différence Now, entre quelqu'un qui arrive à une frontière terrestre, même en taxi ou en, en limousine, versus quelqu'un qui arrive par avion, il faut se souvenir, Raymond, qu'il y a une différence fondamentale. Que quiconque arrive à une frontière terrestre arrive des États-Unis. OK, more, more talk on borders, more talk on borders. This is something that... Um, The conservatives have been really hard on Trudeau about, right, the borders and knowing that we're going to be behind when it comes to vaccinations um, based on compared to other countries. They're saying, hey, we should have had stricter measures here, knowing that this isn't going to uh, we're not going to be able to catch up with this. This is this is one of the main concerns that's going on right now. Interesting stuff, though. I'm seeing questions here. They're saying uh, in, in the chat, you're saying, are has there been any news about benefits? Yes, there has. Today is one of the biggest announcements that has happened here um, is the fact that uh, Christopher Freeland's tabled a bill that's going to uh, implement certain things from the budget. Now, we don't have access to the text yet, um, so but we're going to look into it as soon as we possibly can. I guess she's going to present it in the House of Commons today, and then we're going to be able to go deep dive into the details of what's actually going to change when it comes to these benefits. How are these extensions going to work? Is it going to be the exact same as she said in the budget, or are there going to be some changes? There were some questions about um, whether or not these other political parties are going to support this budget, given all the things that could be included in it. So it'll be interesting to see what they actually try to slip into this bill um, to make sure that there's... Like, Like they're just going for the things that need to be done in a timely manner in order to get it uh, quickly passed, or are they trying to lump a whole bunch of things together and pass it through, which could take a lot longer? I'm going to flip back to the CPAC because uh, as much as it's nice to have that translation, I wasn't getting much from it because... Uh -huh. Because the, like in their levels, like Trudeau is louder than the translator. <laughs> Nice, Wendy. Did your taxes yesterday? Good to get it done. Reminder, anyone who hasn't done it, uh, tax deadlines today. Lots of people were calling on the government to extend this tax filing deadline, but uh, uh, Diane Le Bouthier of the CRA said nope. Uh, essentially, <laughs> she and uh, but she there is the interest uh, deferral for a year, right? So if you do your taxes file on time, you don't have to pay them if you've received any benefits in 2020. So you can sort of defer your tax payment till the 2021 tax season. Um, something that just makes sense for everyone to do if they've received a benefit, because why not take the money that you would have paid in taxes, invest it, make a little bit of extra money, and then pay your taxes in a year, right? Better for you to hold on to your money for an extra year than the government to get a, a free loan from you. Yeah plus possible, mais on va bien sûr continuer à travailler euh, avec euh, les provinces. Par rapport au voyage euh, domestique, euh, le premier ministre Ford a souligné euh, son désir de voir euh, plus de dépistage aux aéroports à travers euh, le pays. C'est des mesures que, évidemment, les provinces peuvent instaurer eux-mêmes. Uh, on a vu, par exemple, uh, dans la bulle atlantique... Yeah, we're going to continue sort of just turning it down a little bit when it gets to the, the French parts. Uh, and we'll, we'll answer some chat questions while we wait uh, for an English question here. Um, I wish I was as bilingual as I would like to be. Yeah, some interesting stuff in here. Yeah, no international flights should be coming in. Most flights are coming in with Air Canada. Both international and domestic flights on Air Canada are coming in with COVID. Yeah, I mean, this, this is the, one of the conservative things that they're, they're, they're really pushing, saying, hey, the government's not being tight enough on borders. Uh, but, yeah. Okay. Um, we will always be there to work with the provinces and territories to keep Canadians safe. I think uh, that is something that we've demonstrated from the very beginning. Uh, and uh, we had conversations around a range of issues that we could move forward on uh, last night. I think one of the things to remember, uh, first and foremost, on international travel and people arriving in Canada is it's been well over a year that we actually shut down over 95% of all travel to Canada. The only people traveling across our border in any way right now are either uh, permanent citizens or Canadians returning home, uh, essential workers, and a limited number of exception cases that uh, have 
squashed the number down to 5% of what it used to be uh, in previous years. On top of that, everyone arriving in the country needs to show up with a uh, negative PCR test from the last 72 hours, gets tested on arrival, goes into a strict quarantine uh, for two weeks in a secure quarantine location, usually their home, with significant follow-ups and checks, and has to do a third test on day eight to ensure that they are negative. These are measures that apply to everyone. And one of the things to remember as well is there is a fundamental difference between someone arriving at our land border versus someone arriving at an airport. Someone who arrives at our land border has been in the United States, has a PCR test from the U.S., even if they traveled internationally before because of U.S. quarantines, has been in the U.S. at least two weeks. And therefore, the measures that we put in place at the border, and we're following very closely the numbers and the data we collect on these tests, uh, has been uh, an extremely low and manageable uh, number of, of cases. And uh, we're always looking at doing more enforcement, at stepping up on the penalties on that, and we will continue to work uh, with the provinces on that. But there is a fundamental difference between someone arriving on connecting flights from uh, anywhere around the world at our airports, which is why uh, we have required government-approved accommodations until the uh, negative PCR test that they got on arrival uh, is indeed uh, furnished. But further than that, we will continue to work uh, with the provinces, whether uh, they want to look at rapid testing on arrival in airports across the country. We have ordered million, we have in our possession millions upon millions of rapid tests that are being underutilized across the country and uh, would happily furnish some to Ontario or any other provinces that want to test people on arrival, but they will have to uh, work out the logistics on how to actually test everyone. But it's something that has been done. We watched uh, the Atlantic provinces severely limit domestic travel with very strong okay, so, measures. So, so more, more talk on borders and, and what's, being, what's being done there. For those who are just tuning in, um, if you click the, click the title of this video, um, yes, there is some new news about benefits, new news about the budget. Uh, new Implementation Act has been brought forward in the House of Commons to bring in some into effect some of the measures inside of the budget. Which measures? Who's going to um, um, get these concerns dealt with that were inside of the budget carried out uh, first? Right, we're gonna we're waiting to see the text of the of this new bill to find out what exactly is uh, is going to be dealt with first. Good morning, Prime Minister. The Manitoba Premier says teachers will soon be able to go down to North Dakota to get vaccinated and come back to Canada without quarantining. Are you comfortable with provinces sending essential workers to the states to get vaccinated? And do you support waiving the quarantine and testing requirements? Um, I believe conversations are still very much ongoing around uh, waiving uh, uh, quarantine requirements. That's something that I think uh, all Canadians have a little concern around. Um, the initial uh, desire to get people who were uh, crossing the border already, like uh, you know, truck drivers and others. Okay, so more border questions. This isn't this isn't really the the topic that we like to cover here. Totally on the channel. We're more interested in the different programs and benefits and things that are affecting Canadians and their money. So I'm going to answer a couple questions in chat while we have this in the background, and I'll listen in to see if we get any more details on this Budget Implementation Act. Okay. Yeah. So same question. Yeah, Raymond says, damn, I want to hear more about the, the benefits. Yeah, we're, just, we're waiting to hear more about that. We're going to see if there are any reporters ask questions on this uh, in this section. And then hopefully by the time this press conference is done, the online version of the bill, Bill C-30, the budget, the but, uh, like what was the title of it? It was, um, what was it? What was it? 
Uh, it was the yeah. So this is the this is the new bill that they've just implemented today for, the, for um imp, and they're calling it an act to implement certain provisions of the budget tabled in Parliament on April nineteenth, twenty twenty one, and other measures. That's interesting, right? And other measures. Who knows what else is going to be inside of this bill? We're gonna have to do a deep dive on it, make sure we know exactly what's inside of this bill, and then we'll get a better idea on whether or not the NDP, the the Conservatives, the Bloc Quebecois, the Green Party, whether or not they're going to support this bill and pass it through. Now. All the Liberals need is the NDP to support them in order to get any legislation passed. So um, as long as the NDP are willing to prop up the Liberal government, well, it seems like there's not going to be an election until the NDP want to uh, trigger one. And they say not till after the pandemic's done because they're saying it's because it's it's not safe for us to hold an election. But... Um, but uh, critics will say that it's because they don't technically want an election. They haven't made as much ground as they would have liked. fully vaccinated by September. Getting vaccinated is how we get through this, and that's what we're going to continue to work on uh, with all our partners. More messages is on that September the... deadline. Thank you, and we'll take one more question on the phone. Operator. La prochaine question de Catherine Lévesque, La Presse canadienne. La parole est à vous. Oui, bonjour, M. Trudeau. Euh, J'aimerais revenir sur le mandat qui a été confié à l'ex-juge Arbour hier concernant les inconduites sexuelles dans l'armée. Je me demandais, en fait, je voulais vous entendre à savoir pourquoi votre gouvernement va-t-il se pencher sur un fléau qui est déjà connu et qui a déjà fait l'objet d'un examen indépendant il y a déjà six ans? Euh, le rapport des champs d'il y, de, de, y a six ans euh, a donné des recommandations, plusieurs euh, desquelles ont été euh, Amené, uh, en changement par le gouvernement. Uh, okay, so it seems like that was going to be the last question for Trudeau. It, it's a French one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna flip over here um, now. We're gonna answer some questions, that, like I said. And I'm expecting for us to rather soon get access to the text of what's actually inside of this bill, which is the most uh, significant announcement from today. If you're just tuning in and you haven't already done so, make sure to like the stream. It helps it get out to more people. But I'll give you a quick recap if you if you haven't been here from the beginning. Well, I, I turned the stream on, and and usually on these streams it's only Trudeau and maybe the health of health officials giving some updates on on what's been going on lately. But I saw in the, the text underneath the update that it, Christopher Freeland was going to be on this uh, broadcast as well. So. I said, hey, I'm going to turn on the stream for this and uh, see what she has to say because, of course, she's the finance minister. She announced that today she's tabling a new bill in the House of Commons, and this new bill is called Bill C-30. I'll show it to you uh, here. Let's flip up on the screen. Like I said, it's an act to implement certain provisions of the budget, tabled in Parliament on April 19th, 2021, and other measures. Now, since last Monday, when they implemented the budget on April 19th, well, there have been uh, days and days of debates inside of the House of Commons all about this budget. Now, when I say debate, it's not like your traditional, like people on one side, people on the other side, and they have points, counterpoints, rebuttals like you may have done in high school or or um, in any other time that you may have uh, experienced debates. It's more of like a, a place where each individual politician has 20 minutes to 30 minutes to do a speech and then 10 minutes uh, of people asking questions to that, uh, that politician about their views on the budget but I think like this whole week of 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 uh, uh, talks on the budget, views from different politicians, well, it all didn't really matter because, of course, the, the initial budget was going to get passed because the NDP have always indicated they're not going to vote against the Liberals because that could potentially trigger an election. So we know that they were able to get that passed uh, as of last week, uh, passed through the initial phase. Now, when a budget gets passed for the first time, well, it doesn't mean that everything is going to be implemented right away. Uh, what actually happens is that now they have to bring forward legislation to uh, to make these changes. And this is the first time that we're seeing that. This is Bill C-30. Now, I'm going to refresh this page really quickly and see if um, we have any text now. And it seems like no. So it's, it's supposed to be first reading held. Introduction and first reading is scheduled for today, April 30th. So it seems like we're not going to have access to the actual text of the bill right away here, uh, but maybe once they actually introduce that in the in the House of Commons today, well then I'm going to be able to get access to it and I'll make a video about that sort of detailing exactly what's in it, um, whether or not these benefit changes are going to work, what the individual wording is of these changes and how that could uh, change who's eligible and, and uh, how these programs are going to work and all of the other things that you could expect to see inside of this Budget Implementation Act, as well as if there's any sort of surprises here. So interesting stuff. 
Alex K says, likely won't see the text bill until Monday. Oh, why do you think that, Alex? Usually usually I can see it up here on Legis Info pretty quickly, but maybe, yeah, maybe we have to wait for this first reading to be done and then they update the website. Yeah, Kelly, you're welcome. Yeah, I thought that video from yesterday was interesting about C10. It's definitely going to be controversial going forward. Yeah, I appreciate everyone tuning into the stream. I see Alex and Tyler and Shelly and Kelly and Matt and Nara. Yeah, Nara says, hello, Russell. Any news on third grants for small businesses? If you're talking about Ontario specifically, nothing that I that I know about from there. You might remember they had the small business support grant. That was the initial up to $20,000. Well, they had a second one. If you qualified for the first one, you should have seen, uh, or I, th I don't believe it's happened yet, but s some people who qualified for the first one were able to get a, a second business grant in Ontario. Um, certain different provinces may have different things as well that might be able to help you there, Nara. Hi, Pam. It's good to see you. Good to see you here on the stream. Yeah, so it looks like we're not going to get this, uh, this, this budget implementation bill today. So I want to open it up. Do you have any questions about anything that we talk about here on the channel? Let's do a quick 10 minute Q&A. Any questions about what we're doing here on the channel with YouTube? Uh, any questions about any of the, the different bills or anything that was in the budget or any of the different programs? Questions you might have about that. As well as, of course, we like to talk here. You may not uh, catch all of these videos, but we also cover monetary policy and investing and personal finance here in Canada, a topic that's kind of underserved, I believe, uh, on, on YouTube. So if you have any questions about that, best bets there in crypto stocks, investing, funds, different strategies. That's something I like to talk about and also have a, a course on if you're interested in more. Uh, there's a link in the description, 45% off with coupon code invest. But if you have a question, make sure to type at Russell Matthews like Alex did. Uh, you can see the orange text there pops up. It makes it easier for me to see if you are if you have an actual question or if it's just a comment. So, so that's what we're going to be doing here for the next 10 minutes and then we'll probably call it a day. What happened to UBI, Shazia says. Yeah, so that, this is a big question. I don't know if you saw the video on my channel called UBI, uh, is UBI dead in Canada? But we saw those votes uh, at the Liberal Policy Convention where now Liberals uh, mostly are in support of a UBI based on the policy vote. Now that doesn't actually hold them uh, to account to actually to change anything inside of their budget. And certainly this vote was held about a week before the budget was tabled and the budget is 700 page document. So they were probably already in the review stages of this budget, um, just getting some fine points nailed down. Um, so uh, I, of course they weren't going to really include a UBI in that in the budget but what the the thesis of that video and you should go back and watch it on my channel i think it says it's dead it's like a dumb face with me doing like the youtube thumbnail face because you have to do that on youtube um but essentially we have to look forward to the election people who are interested in ubi whether you love it or you hate it it's important to keep your eyes on it well when it comes to the ubi now we have to look forward to the next election because that's traditionally when these new policy votes that are done on the the uh, liberal policy convention, that's when they're sort of pushed into the platform. We're going to have to wait and see whether or not they choose to actually put that sort of measure inside of their platform. Ruth and family says, what do you think of undrip? Undrip. I'm not sure I'm to uh, totally familiar with undrip. So I wouldn't be able to give you a, uh, 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 rights of India. Yeah, I, I. So it's the United Nations Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People. Um, so I, yeah, uh, I don't really know a whole bunch about that route. So I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have a, a an educated answer for you. I certainly don't want to speak on anything I don't know about. Sam S says, Russell Matthews, do you hold any cryptocurrency? Yes, I do. I hold, um, it fluctuates based on what the prices of these cryptocurrencies are, but I hold anywhere between five and 10% of my net worth in cryptocurrency. Yeah, I'm definitely um, bullish long-term on cryptocurrency. I think it definitely, the technology behind it, blockchain, especially with Ethereum and the smart contracts that they have and the ability for decentralized finance to be executed on blockchains like that certainly has me, uh, has me, uh, excited and uh, optimistic about the potential future. I love talking cryptocurrency too. It's, it's certainly, uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there about cryptocurrency right now and a lot of sort of pumping of, um, 
of, of projects that may not have uh, actual like a, a backing in terms of actually solving a problem, right? Uh, there's lots of sort of, like, like I like to sort of stick to your, your main plays on cryptocurrency. I personally only invest in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Cardano a little bit of a small, small portion of my crypto portfolio. Um, and I have my own thesis behind each of those and why I think they're a good long-term investment. But I really recommend that anyone who's investing, again, don't put more than you're comfortable into it. Uh, and, and do the research so you can have an idea on why you believe that this thing, this problem that's being solved by the cryptocurrency is of value and have a thesis behind why you think it's going to grow, right? And and make that make your mind up for yourself on that. Don't just buy it because you heard about it and you think you're going to make money on it, right? That would be my advice about the crypto industry or crypto space, I guess, not industry. Um. Scott Matthews says, hey, Russell, what are the chances of C10 not being passed? I hope it doesn't. Well, it's really going to um, have uh, some effects. Uh, okay, we're going to have to look at what this bill actually looks like when it gets out of the committee phase. Right now it's in the committee phase. They can make amendments. They can make changes. Um, certain things may not be permanent. Other things might be added. So we're not going to have an idea on whether or not it's going to be passed until we have an idea on what the different parties' stances are on the final text of the bill, right? We're gonna find that out at third reading after it goes through the committee stage. The NDP have said that they may support this bill, but they need to take a closer look at it. So it's largely all on the NDP. A lot of these decisions, if if the conservatives don't support something and the Bloc Quebecois don't support something and the Greens support something, but the liberals do, well, the NDP have enough votes to get anything the liberals want passed. So that's why I always like to cover the NDP because of the uh, unique math around how they can get things passed. Past. Politically incorrect says I am on EI currently. Any news of it being extended past September? Well, I mean, you're going to be able to get the amount of weeks that are left on your claim, right? You can check on your Service of Canada account um, how many weeks you have left, right? How many weeks you can expect. Um, certainly, when you when you finish on EI, if you're still unable to get a job, and of course that's the goal, everyone wants to get back to work and should be trying actively to. But uh, if you're still unable to to go back to work, then the CRB is available, and based on the text that's in inside of this bill, we might have a little bit of an extension of the CRB as well, potentially past September, the deadline typically for CRB right now and the CRSB, CRCB, well, they're looking to be able to potentially extend that no later than November. That was what was inside the budget. Again, we're going to have to take a closer look at what's inside this budget implementation act that was just announced today. What's my thought on 50-year bonds, Pooter Singh says? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, it's interesting, right? We talk about the ways that the government actually finances its spending. I love talking about this. I have said this before on the stream, but I love talking about these macroeconomics, right? Like the bigger picture economics that are kind of controlling Canadian life uh, as we know it. I think that oftentimes people use these big words that make it seem like it's more complex than it is. But I, I think what could be more impactful on Canadians and their everyday lives in these macroeconomics? Uh, policies, these changes that are being made to money on a large scale. Um, Pooter here is asking, what's your thought on the 50-year bonds? Now, the government of Canada, they don't fund their programs through taxes. They fund it through writing government of Canada bonds, essentially IOU notes. Now, they're looking to lock in the low interest debt or low interest rate debt that they can take on right now because we have super low interest rates. They want to lock that in for longer amounts of time, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and now they're proposing a 50-year bond uh, where the government of Canada can lock in like these record low interest rates to borrow money. And and I think there are pros and cons, right? Certainly there are questions about how we're going to pay this debt in the future, right? This is what uh, what a lot of conservatives are really concerned about. Are we ever going to be able to pay off this debt? Um, but certainly proponents of modern monetary theory say, hey, it's okay to to have a, a, a long-term debt and it, you don't need to actually pay it back. Uh, that's what many many other analysts on the other side of things are saying, but at least coming from the real estate background, if you don't already know, I'm a realtor in the greater Toronto area. I work mostly east of the city, so feel free to reach out if you ever need to buy a place or sell a place around there. But, um, uh, Certainly in the real estate industry, if you have access to extremely low interest rate money and you can lock that in for the long term, I would take I would do that in a heartbeat, right? So I can't entirely say that I don't think it's a good idea for the government of Canada to lock in debt. 
uh, at low interest rates, as long as the things they're doing with that money, uh, with that debt they're taking on, as long as that is producing a return that is greater than the debt servicing cost, right? The interest they're paying on it. I think that that's a, a, could be a wise decision. But again, the questions of paying it off, there's lots of uh, questions in the middle on that sort of thing. Sam S says, get back on the Bitcoin bandwagon and also jump on Ethereum. I'm, I'm in both of those. In both of those, I use Newton. There's a link in the description. You can get um, 25 bucks of extra cryptocurrency. I think it, I think it is, but uh, that, that's my personal favorite uh, lately. Lately for for buying cryptocurrency. Sunny says, thank you, Russell. Thanks for tuning in, Sunny. There's no jobs here. What do I think of the C10 bill? All my thoughts on the C10 bill. Um, well, I, I kind of like to stay in the middle on these things because I think. Uh, the, some of the value in this channel is the, the fact that I bring you information and try to keep it as uh, not tilted in any political direction as I possibly can. So I'm always hesitant to, to voice my, my full opinions on things uh, because I think that sort of takes away from the legitimacy of the things that I do when I'm reporting on this stuff. Um, but I think it's C10, something that's interesting to watch. Um, conservatives are calling it an, uh, an attack on free speech. Liberals are saying, hey, you're you're misinterpreting what the bill's intent is. But regardless of the intent of the bill, I think that the, the, the language inside of this legislation uh, for Bill C-10 is a little bit weak in achieving the goals that it's trying to do. So regardless of whether or not you believe it's an attack on free speech or not, I think that maybe this bill isn't the best bill and maybe it could be reworded and, and re drafted to actually achieve the goals that the liberals say they're trying to achieve so that this debate about free speech doesn't even need to happen, right? Alex K says, uh, Russell, I think you should help Canadians understand that interest rates, especially for MBS, don't drastically change in the course of a year or two. Uh, MBS, is that, what, what is that acronym? Remind me, remind me, Alex. And then I'll be able to answer your question a little bit more clearly. Uh, Zenora Smith says, hi, Russell, hi. What about the CCB? So CCB, um, that was part of Bill C-12, Bill C-12. Now, just last week, that made it through um, the second phase of the House of Commons. It was all it was voted through, uh, or the third phase, actually. Yeah, it went to committee, came back for third reading, and now it's off to the Senate. Uh, as of right now, I don't believe that the Senate has voted this through. Uh, I need to double check on that. But once it makes its way through the Senate, well, you could expect to see retroactive uh, boosts to your CCB for all of the year of 2021, right? So back to the first quarter, right? January to April. Now we're in April. So um, if this is passed, you could expect to see an extra $300 if you're somebody who receives uh, CCB. Mortgage-backed securities. Uh, I got you, got you, got you. Yeah, you you don't really see these uh, mortgage-backed securities and these interest rates drastically change in the course of a year or two. Yeah, this is true, uh, except for, I mean, uh, times when uh, it, it can be manipulated by the 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 central banks of the world, right? You have the Bank of Canada when, when the pandemic hit. Well, we did see drastic changes in interest rates because of the new programs, the quantitative easing, their bond buying programs that really pushed down interest rates in their eyes to help stimulate the economy. There have been some problems there, right? We've seen, we've seen a, a huge run up of uh, assets, right? Of stocks and real estate. Uh, some, of, some of these assets have run up in price because of these record low interest rates, but the interest rates have also helped support different businesses and jobs to be hiring more and to be growing and stimulating the economy. So some people have criticized the Bank of Canada for making the decisions they have because you see the runaway housing market, you see assets being pumped and largely wealthy people who have learned to invest, learned to uh, save more and 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 spend less uh, and earn more and funnel that all into investments as I like to talk about on this channel and in the course in the description. Uh, people who have done that have largely done well throughout the pandemic because of the, the Bank of Canada as policies, right? Low interest rates means that uh, some of these assets are going to inflate in value um, at the cost of potentially widening that, that gap. Yeah, I don't know if that entirely answered, it, well, it wasn't really a question, it was just a statement, Alex, but yeah, we, we typically don't see those rates fluctuate a lot, but it's something interesting to watch. 
Lex Ruger says, what's your profession? Yeah, so my full-time job is as a realtor in the greater Toronto area. So I do that. And uh, I'm also like, have been putting more and more time in, into growing this YouTube channel uh, on, on top of all of that. And I've been really enjoying that. I love connecting with you and getting to chat with all you and specifically these live streams. Like if you're somebody who's watching this, you're, you're somebody I, I like to connect with. You know what I mean? I like to see your name in chat and I recognize people from previous live streams like Alex has been chatting and that's why I've been reading some of his stuff a little bit more because I've seen him here a couple times and it's great to get to know people and have this opportunity to connect in a time when it's more difficult to connect with people. Eric Johnson says, inflation is fake because there are people born that create more, so it evens out the printing of cash. It's all fake fiat currency anyway. I mean, yeah, I, well, like fiat currency hasn't been backed by gold for a very, very long time, and the the, the validity of any monetary system um, not backed by like a, a real asset, well, it, it's largely... Uh, it only exists in our brains. Do you know what I mean? It only exists and it is only valuable because we give it value. Apart from that, what's a, what's a piece of paper? What's a zero in a bank account, right? So that argument can always be made about fiat currency. Fiat just meaning like the Canadian dollar, the US dollar. Steel Farmer says, Russell, are you going to run for PM? Uh, I I don't see that in my future, I'll be honest with you. If I ever do, you can look back at this live stream, but I don't think that I would... I, you, you never you never say never, but I don't think that I would ever, ever do that <laughs> because it just seems like there's too much garbage you have to deal with in that job. And I'd far rather do something that uh, I could potentially scale a business more than I could run a, run a, run a government, certainly. And you'd have to sit through all of these, these committee meetings. And like, I watch that stuff on 4X speed because no way am I going to watch people drone on and on and on about things that uh, don't necessarily need to be uh, had that much time spent on them. James May, it seems like they are still lowering the CRB. There wasn't any announcement otherwise. Again, we're waiting to see the text. I'm going to refresh. Yeah, if you're just tuning in, and we're in a question and answer sort of period right now. But I've been refreshing this page because this is where the text of this new bill is going to be posted. So once, we, once we're able to see that, we can, we can check in there. Yeah, Dave, Dave, that's a good question. Dave says, I'm in training as a home inspector. What are your thoughts of home sales with no conditions? Are you pushing sales or protecting home buyers? I mean, it's it's certainly a risk, right? It's a risk because in this competitive market where there's not enough supply and so much demand, and we have we have um, 10, 20, 30, depending on when you're talking over the past two months, offers on any given property, well, it's so competitive that people are waiving their inspection clauses. Typically when you buy a property and typically when I've worked with uh, clients over the past few years, I've always instructed them to include an inspection clause, right? As well as like, a financing clause, make sure you get all your financing contingencies sorted out before you lock in the deal and are actually expected to close on the property. But Dave's saying here that many people are waiving the inspection clauses. Now, this can be certainly dangerous for people if they don't have the ability to recognize uh, uh, certain um, certain red flags in a property, right? Uh, but it is like like Dave. It's a tricky situation because simply clients who are including their inspection clauses as, as well as other clauses, well, they're not looked upon as favorably as the people who don't. So this is the reality of the market right now, uh, and I. Uh, I think it's important that any realtor that you work with or any realtor in general explains to their clients the risks that are involved, but also contrasts that against the current market, right? Um, yeah, so this is, this is this is the challenging question right now. Do you do you waive that inspection clause just to get the deal and then maybe deal with the other stuff later, right? If there's any problems with it and sort of take that risk, well, it's going to be up to every individual person's risk tolerance and what they're comfortable with, their background in construction or um, their understanding of what risks could be, as well as if you have a realtor that has a better eye for certain clear red flags uh, and can kind of help out with that with that process. Um, but you can also like hire a home inspector to literally come to your showing right <laughs> so um, this is another option so you could just take take a look at it um uh, just a walkthrough like not a formal home inspection but just maybe pay someone to come in there and be a set of eyes not a formal in inspection i'm not sure how that works out with uh what you're allowed to do dave but 
Tito Rick says, hi, Russell. Wife has about 15,000 in her TFSA, all taxes paid. What should she do now? Congratulations. That's awesome that you have 15,000 in your TFSA. Now I'm curious, is your TFSA, uh, and for people who are watching, that's a tax-free savings account, one of the best accounts to invest in in Canada. Now it's called a tax-free savings account, but I think it's a little bit of a misnomer or it's named wrong, right? They call it a tax-free savings account. So people think, hey, it's like my bank savings account. I could put money in here. I wouldn't advise you to treat a TFSA like a savings account. Instead, open up a self-directed TFSA investment account. That'll allow you to pick individual stocks or pick ETFs, uh, create a dividend portfolio, all things where we talk about in the course in the description, 45% off with the coupon code invest if you're interested. But we, we talk about that a lot because the TFSA has so many advantages because when typically when you invest and you make some money on your investment, when you sell that, the government's going to say, hey, we want our piece of the pie, right? With a TFSA, if you open up a self-directed TFSA investment account, well, then, then the government can't take taxes from you when you go to sell. There's no capital gains tax. Um, but all of this to, to answer your question, saying what should she do? Um, well, it really depends on what your short-term and long-term goals are. Are you Do you foresee needing that money, right? How, how risky can you be with the investments that you choose? But certainly, I think that if you're in that position, you paid off your debts, you have $15,000 in a TFSA, I think certainly it should be invested right now. Um, there, are, it, there are concerns about anyone who has a large amount of money in cash in savings, especially given given the, the forecast for potential inflation in the future where our dollars are going to be worth less and less. And, but by investing in assets and, and stocks, then hopefully the goal is that this will um, inflate as at the same pace or greater than inflation, largely keeping your money safe from these worries of inflation. So I think certainly it's important for people to, to start investing. Why haven't the government offered to put people back in school while on CERB to better ourselves? Hello from Medicine Hat. Yeah, Rodney, that's a good question. Um, I mean, there are certain provisions inside of this budget that say they're going to retool and retrain certain Canadians, but we need to look more into the details on what exactly is going to happen there. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly something we need to be thinking about. Right, but we have an economy here in Canada that is starting to age. There, there's still some support for some of these more traditional sectors, but I think if if you have any foresight, it's important that we start training Canadians for the jobs of the future, things that are actually going to provide the most value to our economy. And I think that I, I support any kind of budgetary or monetary policy or budgetary or political policy that sort of pushes people into these sectors. Do you know what I mean? Because I do think that the the, the economy is rapidly changing and, and in order to have a strong Canada, we need to be uh, upfront about recognizing that. Alex again says, and again, I'm seeing Alex's more clearly because he's tagging me with that at Russell Matthews, uh, certified as a home inspector. I've been doing on the spot inspections prior to bids being signed and confirmed. My remodeling business has been booming also. Yeah, Alex, that's exactly, that's, I'm glad you verified that that's uh, legit and okay to do. Yeah, you can get an inspector to come through on your walkthrough of the property so that you don't need to put that inspection clause uh, on your property. You need to be competitive right now to get a deal. It, the demand is simply very, very high. You got to expect to pay a little bit more than you maybe were expecting. Again, I tell all my clients, asking price doesn't matter. Asking price doesn't matter. You can still get a deal on a property if it's under market price, right? Market price isn't determined by what they list the property as, at. It's determined by the market comparables, only the sold data, right? Things that have sold recently in the area that are comparable in terms of size and quality of the of the property, right? So you need to make sure you have a realtor that's that's analyzing based on those on that data. Uh, but yeah, and remodeling business is booming also. Yeah, and this is this is this is the thing, right? We have so much growth in the real estate industry. Well, that funnels out into so those tertiary markets, right? The remodeling, the all of these construction businesses, right? So I think that's one of the reasons that the Bank of Canada and the government doesn't really want to tackle housing that much, is because it makes up such a large portion of our GDP. Dave B says, thanks, side question. How would you feel being cold contacted by a new inspector trying to get into the business? Would you brush them off or offer work? Well, you know, the, I, you, you typically want, well, as, as a realtor, uh, when I have clients, 
I will typically give them, because you want to abstain yourself from any, any sort of liability, uh, I would typically give them a list of three names for them to choose from. Uh, the inspectors maybe give a couple notes about whether or not I've worked with them in the past before. I think realtors, uh, it's interesting whether or not realtors do that and adhere to, to the ethics or they just go with one guy who's their buddy. Um, but I was, certainly you could try to be included in that list of names that that's given, added to a list. Um, but tip, like, it, and this is the difficult thing going into any business, like going into real estate for the first time or, or going into any of these sales-based and uh, networking-based jobs, right? It's going to be slow for the start. Uh, that, that's the way that I view it. Uh, and you sort of build up this momentum as you make more contacts. But certainly networking, when all of this um, COVID business is, is behind us, go to, go to investor meetups, real estate investing meetups. Go network as much as you possibly can because I think that when people know you face-to-face -face and you have a conversation with them, um, real estate estate really is a people business. So I think making those connections could be good for you, Dave. Yeah, I see uh, Pooter Singh saying, hit, hit the like. Yeah, I, I think there's a, a few hundred people in here. We only have 105 likes. I think you guys can uh, help me out there. I think it'll get more people into this stream. And again, we're going to answer a few more questions. And I, I really enjoy hanging out with you guys. And what better way to spend a, a Friday early afternoon than hanging out with you guys? Thanks for the kind words, Eric Johnson. That's awesome. Uh, can I offer 200000 for a million dollar home and get it? I think that may not be the most competitive offer, H. Um, Abdullah says, do I only pay tax on crypto when exchanging it to fiat? Uh, I think right now, and I, I need to do more research on this because for my crypto portfolio, I only buy and hold, haven't sold a single thing. Uh, that's, that's my strategy. I'm very long on cryptocurrency, so I only want to buy. Um, but I believe that it's treated as a as a security in Canada, right? So it would likely be treated in the same way that stocks do. Um, right now, we can't hold cryptocurrency in a registered account, like a TFSA, an RRSP, RESP, or, or a RIF, right? Uh, so we can't hold them in that, those kind of accounts, so there's no real tax shelter from it. Uh, but what, so likely what will happen is you will pay um, tax on the capital gains of, of that cryptocurrency investment is what they see it as. People argue whether or not it should be considered an investment like a security or or a commodity like a currency or like a, like this. So they're treated differently t from a tax perspective. But I believe that they're considered uh, securities right now. Uh, so that means that you're going to pay 50 take 50% of the growth of your portfolio, right? Uh, of growth of anything that you sold and then add that 50% of that growth in your income. Um, that's going to be taxed at your income rate or at your tax rate, your marginal tax rate, right? So you essentially add the income of 50% of the growth. That's capital gains tax. Again, something we talk about in the course as well, but uh, that's going to be added to your income. So th that's generally how you would, would claim it. To the best of my understanding, again, I'll, I'll emphasize here, not a licensed tax professional. Anything said on these streams, not investment advice. This is just all my personal thoughts and it should provide you a good point to start at to do your own research to inform any opinions and any um, decisions you make. Uh, you always have to say that on the on online. You can't be too careful. <laughs> Sunny says, Russell, when the bull run is over, how do we keep the crypto in USDC? What about the taxes for next year? What should we do to save taxes? Thank you. Well, I mean, like, and we keep the, so you have crypto in USDC. So you have a stable coin that's pegged supposedly against the US dollar. You probably get a decent interest rate on that. There could be, depending on if you hold it on BlockFi or, or, or um, some, or, or Fahrenheit, is that the other one? There's, there's a couple different lending platforms that will pay you interest rates for putting your, your cryptocurrency with them. Um, but if what about the taxes for next year? If you don't if you don't sell, you don't you're not going to realize your capital gains tax. If you sell, well then you need to um, you need to claim capital gains tax. Yeah, which can kind of be a bummer. Uh, Brett Kelly says, "What does any of this matter when inflation is going to make bread cost thirty dollars a loaf?" Yeah, in in terms of what specifically, I wonder, Brett. Um, I I think yes, inflation is certainly a, a concern, right? We see. Like I, some stat, like I think uh, across all the governments, all, all the democratic gun governments across the uh, the world have in the past year added 25% of the total money pool in the world. Now I need to double check that stat, but that's, that's what I was reading earlier. Uh, 
which is pretty pretty crazy, right? You think that it, we, we've expanded our uh, our base of uh, money in the world by 25% in one year. Uh, you got to think that there's some sort of inflation coming. We think that we're seeing that in assets, right? Stocks and real estate, but also we're slowly starting to see it in other spaces too. IPEC or EPEC uh, Solmaz says, uh, you know about CCB new boosting 300 when we get payment April 2021. Federal said that. Yeah, the, the CCB, that's Bill C-13, I believe, or C-14. Uh, it's in the Senate right now. We're waiting, at least uh, I believe, I, I hope I'm up to date on this, but it's currently in the Senate. They need to pass it, then it will receive royal assent, and then that top-up will become a reality. That $1,200 over the year. Oh that, oh, that answers your question too, Chrissy. Hopefully that helps you guys. Thank you. Not selling fiat will crash. We'll keep crypto. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely long crypto as well. Again, around five, between five and 10% of my net worth is I hold in, in cryptocurrency. That, that I think it's important that when people talk about things that they at least disclose the percentage of the portfolio to show how much conviction they have in that. Right? I certainly think that people should have a balanced portfolio and not just YOLO it all in, in cryptocurrency on some altcoin that's gonna, they hope, grow 100%, right? Uh, I think that that's maybe not the way to do it. That's kind of like uh, speculating buying a lottery ticket. I think that the goal long-term should be to be, again, this is what I talk about a lot a lot um, in, in the Money Mastery program, but it's all about lowering your expenses, raising your income, investing as much of that as you possibly can, um, and uh, doing that in ways that gives you sort of a balanced portfolio that, that even if one sector doesn't do well, you're going to keep having that investment there and really holding it for the long term. These are the ways I like to invest. Sports Entertainment says, Russell Matthews, what do I do when my mortgage is up for renewal? Like, am I able to go with another bank with lower interest? Yeah, exactly. So here in Canada, we have typically five-year periods on our mortgage, right? If you have a fixed mortgage, right? A fixed rate mortgage. When your mortgage is up, well, you can choose to renew with the bank that you're currently on, or you can go to a mortgage broker and say, hey, I'm looking for a refinance. I'm at the end of the term of my mortgage. Help me out here. Typically, a mortgage broker is going to help you get the lowest rates of what's best for you. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so you can do that at the end of your five-year period on your mortgage. Uh, and there's lots of questions about what's better, a variable rate or a fixed rate. Like fixed rate, you feel more certain that this is going to be your payment for the long term. Uh, you're going to make be able to make that payment every month and it's not going to change. But there are some things to be said about variable rate mortgages, right? Variable rate mortgages where your interest rate can go up and down based on what interest rates are in that current environment. Well, there are some benefits, right? With a variable rate mortgage, you can break out of that mortgage without paying these huge penalties that are on, on fixed rate mortgages. Uh, but another benefit is that if, if interest rates slowly rise, well, you're going to be slowly keeping up and, and sort of adjusting your life cost expen expenses as your housing bill goes up. Now, that means at the end of the five-year period, if, like if you had a, a fixed rate mortgage and you got it for like, what, 2% right now, 2.2. Uh, and it, let's say five years from now, interest rates are at 10%. Well, that would be quite the shock to all of a sudden have to get a mortgage at 10%, right? Versus your 2.2 before. But there are arguments to be made that if you got a variable rate mortgage at 2.2, well, slowly over time, you may be paying more, but uh, your your payments will go up over time along the long term. For, for some people, this can be more of a gradual easing in to the new interest rates at the end of your five-year period. But hopefully that answers your question a little bit, Pixel. Thanks for tuning in too. You're, you're a consistent uh, viewer here. Slick Pete says, Russell, do credit unions do mortgage stress tests like banks? I believe they do. Well, like the thing is credit unions will... Um, will fund thing like every credit union is a little bit different if, if you don't know what a credit union is it's sort of like a b lender we have our a lenders that will give out mortgages lines of credit things like these um traditionally you have to have pretty good credit um they'll give you probably the best rates the lowest rates but it's more difficult to qualify this is like scotia bank td all these big bank lenders uh cibc um, certainly scotia bank has the most broad uh lending program the most uh and the most interesting products from, from uh, an A lender perspective, but credit unions would be seen as like a B lender. They kind of work a little bit like banks, but they, they aren't, they, each one is a little bit more different. It's a little bit more mom pop feeling. You can typically qualify for, for a little bit more. They might have more flexibility in their programs, but I believe that they will do stress tests. Um, 
depending on if it's insured or not, right? An insured mortgage or not. In Canada, if you have a down payment under five per, under 20%, you have to insure your mortgage through CMHC. So there are some certain, um, certain considerations to make there, and it's a very, very case by case. Um, but you'd have to reach out to your individual credit union to, to check, check on this. Yeah, okay, Eric has an answer. Yes, my house is through the credit union. They do a stress test. And so so there's, a, there's a good answer for you, Slick Pete. Pooter, what's my, what's my hot take on NFTs? Okay, super hot take because I haven't looked into it a ton. I was really close to buying one. Austin, Ma if you guys don't know, I'm a huge Leafs fan. Uh, Austin Matthews released an NFT like commemorating one of like his four goals in his debut against Ottawa like in 2016. And I was like, oh man, I think I, I would like that. I would like that. But it went, ended up going for like three grand. And I, my thought was like, am I going to buy this collectible for three grand? Or am I going to just take that money and just invest it in, in, in stocks and cryptocurrency, right? And, or save it up for, for another down payment on a potential rental property in the future, right? So like, I just, I just couldn't bring myself to spend the money on it. Uh, I think that there, because it doesn't create any, any value, like certainly it can go up just like, like art, art can, right? Um, but I don't think that people should be really speculating in terms of investment on. I think, hey, if you want to have this collectible, maybe it'll go up over time, maybe it won't. But if it brings you enough value, then certainly by all means, go for it. Buy that NFT that you want and uh, and do with it what you will, right? Maybe, maybe flip it if you do believe that it's going to go up in value. But I don't think that there's much indication that every single different NFT will go up in value. So you really got to have your own thesis and ideas about it. I hope that's not too uh, in the middle for you about my perspective on that, but NFT is my safe word. <laughs> uh, I've bought Topps baseball card NFT and just like my physical baseball cards, they will hold no value. Exactly. Like you can buy it for fun if you want to buy it, right? That That's that's fine. As long as you don't have any preconceived preconceived notions about it being your ticket to riches, right? Same with like certain altcoins. Like some people are sort of like, hey, I can't, like yeah, a thousand percent return sounds a lot sexier than getting seven every year in the stock market, eight every year, maybe 10 if you're lucky. But I don't think that it's as sustainable as like getting, just investing for the long term, doing it consistently, lowering your expenses, making more money, investing the difference consistently over time in realistic yields, right? It's the boring, not sexy way to invest, but it, it's what I what I like to do. Yeah, Justin, they, the N NBA Top Shots are the most interesting. I wish the NHL came out with it because I certainly would be involved. Like I would, I would want some just for fun, just for fun because I'm such an NHL fan. And I, if you guys have tuned in on the live stream before, I typically only tell this this little Easter egg about my videos to people on the live stream. Uh, people like Candice will certainly know. She, I saw you in the chat earlier, but um, I'll turn off this chat. Check out. I don't know if you've ever noticed this Rubik's cube. Uh, this is this is an Easter egg I only give to people on the live streams. You can check it out on my videos, but this is always going to correlate to who's won the most recent Leafs game. So Leafs are winning, you got blue. If they're going to play the Habs tonight, well, then it's going to be blue and red on, on the Rubik's Cube. So this is my little Easter egg. It's always uh, hockey related on that Rubik's Cube. I always change it. Uh, Brett Kelly says, why did I have to pay taxes on my uh, Palladium, but not on... Uh, silver, gold, or platinum. Yeah, I don't, I'm not the most experienced because I, I don't own any um, any hard assets like, like that, any commodities like gold, silver, or platinum. Uh, so so I, I don't have a clear answer for you and I never want to just talk out of my <laughs> out of my butt without, without knowing what I'm talking about. So I don't really have the, the most uh, information on that for you, Brett. Russell, but as prices skyrocket, is uh, going to become the land of the, the big corporations, small businesses will finally be sniffed out by the government, it seems. I mean, it definitely seems like that could be a potential for the future, right? I think certainly through what's been going on across the world, we're, we're seeing a, a wealth gap spread, right? And we it is an interesting time in politics, too, because we have the NDP ringing alarm bells about this on the left, but we also have conservatives ringing, ringing alarm bells about this on the right. Now, their solutions for how they could solve the problem are largely different, but it's an interesting time we live in. It, interesting time. It, it's interesting to watch, and I don't have any forecast on exactly what's going to happen, but that certainly is a potential reality. 
Tabish Gill says, I have filed taxes for 2020 being self-employed. I have to pay as individual income and HST, GST. Same as me. I just did that too. I am eligible for interest relief. This applies to both individual repayment and GST. I think it's only for individual repayment. And this is what I, this is what I did, but I'm, I, I, I paid my HST GS2 that I was obligated to collect. Um, but then I, I'm going to take advantage of the, the, the interest uh, relief, right? Because for, for one month back at the beginning of the, the pandemic, uh, I, I received some of these benefits too because I said, hey, I'm not, I'm, I, like, I can't, I'm not going to go out there and work right now. So much uncertainty. So because of that, I'm eligible for interest relief. And certainly anyone who's eligible for interest relief, I think it's wise to take that money potentially invest it in something as long as you are going to be able to make that bill payment in the extra year certainly invest that uh why give the government a, a free loan when you could have a, essentially a free loan because you don't have to pay your taxes until the next year right yeah aj Connis, uh i will give you a quick little update the budget in broad terms passed, but that's not anything that's going to actually bring in any changes. We actually have to see the legislation now. Now today, Krista Freeland uh, released the fact that she was going to bring forward Bill C-30. It's called an act to implement certain provisions of the budget tabled in Parliament on April 19th, 2021, and other measures. That's the full name of the bill. It's a, it's a mouthful, right? But inside of this bill is going to be actually the first steps in pushing this through the legislative process in order to get some changes about the CRB made, changes about um, potential first steps on childcare. Uh, we could see the extension, or we're, she said that we're going to see extensions of like, different business supports. So that's generally what was announced today and we've sort of just uh gone off on a tangent and started chatting here in the chat for people who are joining us a little late leaves to win first round hopefully build 218 passes so we can use the score to bet hey hey not too bad alex not too bad i i hope i i've never seen the leafs win a playoff round ever what what, what year was that the last time that they they won a playoff round I can't. I can't even remember. I, I first really got heavily into the Leafs in like 2013 when they had that heartbreaking loss in the first round to the Bruins in Game Seven. Like they're up three in the third and then they lose. That that was when that was my. I think every Leafs fan, and probably every hockey fan, has that heartbreak that at the same time as making you hate the team also makes you love them. So that that was mine. 2004. Okay, so I, I have been alive, but I wasn't engaged in a, in a, in hockey. Oh man, that's wild. Uh, Pooter says, uh, when you track crypto, do you leave it in uh, on Canadian dollars, or U.S. dollars? Also, what do you think will happen with Canadian dollars? It's been gaining some steam. Could U.S. say level the playing field? Yeah, interesting thoughts here, right? Um, it doesn't really matter to me which one, whatever the platform defaults to, I'll track it in Canadian USD. It's a quick conversion to find out what it's, what it's worth when I'm tracking my crypto portfolio. Um, but what do I happen to think will happen with the Canadian dollar? Well, like there people think, oh, it's good to have a strong Canadian dollar, but in some senses, I don't think it's all that positive for Canada as a whole to have an increasing, uh, dollar value relative to the U S because when the Canadian dollar increases, well, it becomes, uh, businesses in Canada become less competitive um, than businesses in the States when it comes to people who are in the States buying those those products or services from Canadians, right? When you think about U.S. citizens or U.S. businesses buying from Canada, well, they get a sweet deal on the conversion rate. But if the Canadian dollar goes up, well, the conversion rate makes it more expensive to do business in Canada, right? So there are certainly pros and cons of having the, the dollar go up and down uh, that many people don't don't think about. Don DeMarco, Leafs suck. I will take I will take the Leafs hate because I know the Leafs are just like they're like the Death Star of the of the hockey world. <laughs> and they're definitely easy to love to hate, and especially with all the coverage they get and how big the fan base is. Hammer and Anvil, I'm not holding any AMC or or GME. I, I never really got into that movement. Um, certainly support the the idea behind it of people getting into investing and getting excited about it. I think that that's such a positive. But I'm really scared that people who were heavily burnt on AMC and GME, well, maybe they'll be um, two things. Maybe they'll be discouraged from investing in the future, thinking, oh, what's the point? I lost all this money uh, for people who did lose money. Certainly lots of people made a lot of money on that. But uh, in the second way, I think because of the intense amount of gains and quick gains we saw with that, I hope that people aren't thinking that the consistent small gains 
are less exciting and don't aren't important, right? I think that that's the fundamental of investing is having these slow gains over a long amount of time. And if the whole GameStop Wall Street bets situation caused people to forget about investing or or change their expectations about investing and as a result aren't doing it now, I think that that's a, a negative. Yeah, so it seems, AJ, based on this bill, well, again, we're going to wait for the text, but CRBs uh, should end uh, in September, potentially November, depending on if they extend it or not. But you only have the certain amount of periods to apply, but now they're adding these additional ones where you can only get 300 bucks. I have I have a video on the channel about all the CRB changes in the budget, so make sure to check this out um, if you're leaving the live stream. Check out the, the CRB video I made there because that has all the details for you. Yeah, yeah. Dollar cost averaging almost always wins. That, that Just invest over the long term, slowly put more money into the market um, based on your, your portfolio, your strategy, right? Lots of people will be dividend investors, fund investors. Some people like to have a two basket approach. Again, I talk about this all in the course, 40% off or 45% off coupon code invest if you're interested in it. But we, we talk about like how there, there's also a two basket approach um, in, in one of these upcoming lectures, a two basket approach where people are, like keep a, a safe portfolio. Depending on your age, you want to wait these differently a safe portfolio of ETFs and and funds that sort of track the broad market but then if you want to keep on doing research and and do the work that goes behind individual stock picking I think it's okay to have two baskets a growth basket where you want to pick your your favorites and then also an ETF basket just to keep you engaged in investing if that's something that's interesting to you but certainly for most people who don't want to do all the research, I think investing in ETFs that give you a broader diversification, a bunch, it's like a basket of a bunch of different stocks instead of buying just one that could go down or could go up. Well, it gives you exposure to the entire market. I think that's usually the best for most Canadians who don't want to spend a portion of their day researching different stocks and companies. <laughs> Don DeMarco says, Vegas, here I come. Like I always say, drip it so you can rip it into the future. <laughs> that, that's so funny. Like drip, like dividend reinvestment plan. So you're a dividend investor. Okay, Slick Pete. Okay. Okay, nice. There, there's some. If you're investing in um, uh, Canadian eligible dividends, there's certainly some good tax write-offs. If you're below like two hundred thousand uh, dollars yearly income, you can. There's some pretty sweet tax write-offs for dividend income. So, not bad. Ryan, no, I have never gotten into commodities. Um, I, I yeah. I've never gotten into into commodities. I know lots of people use it as a hedge against inflation. For me, I feel like that is slowly turning into what my crypto portfolio is, my allocation in my overall portfolio into crypto, because I do think that it is inverse against inflation, right? Um, because it has a set amount of production, you can't have like the Federal Reserve Jerome Power, the Bank of Canada, Tiff Macklem running that money printer, right, to devalue a currency. So I think it is kind of like a, a, a backup against inflation. But gold certainly could, could do that too. I just am not as passionate about gold and I don't, Maybe I don't understand it fully enough to to see the value that lots of people see in it, but that's not not a part of my investing. Hey, Toronto Yeller. Hey, Frank. Good to see you, Frank. Always uh, good to see you in here with that uh, shiny red members badge. Love to see it. Um, Ryan Bernhardt says, is crypto the way to go now? Um, well, I'll tell you, it's 5 to 10% of my net worth, depending on the fluctuations of the price. That, that's where I keep it at in terms of my investing. Um about 50% of my net worth is in real estate and then the rest in, in stocks and equities. Uh, so th that, that's how I'm, how I'm weighing it. Yeah, Alex, that's that's a solid portfolio. I like the way that you think. You like you're young enough that you can be making these bets on growth and uh, growth and crypto, right? But then you also have the value stocks, maybe some more blue chip stuff that's not going to fluctuate as drastically. Maybe even pays you some dividends. Um, and then you you have those uh, those hard asset commodities that sort of can be like a hedge against the 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 other portions of your portfolio. Not bad. Uh, Russell, do you think the government will step in if prices skyrocket? before lower class citizens cannot afford groceries. Well, 
I think that the it's largely up to the Bank of Canada stepping in. And if they don't see their CPI, this is the metric they use to determine inflation. If they don't see their CPI rising above, well above the 2% target or the 1% on either side that they say is like a fluctuation range, 3% to 1%. If they see inflation based on their data go over 3%, well, then I could see some changes to their monetary policy that could try to curb against inflation so that prices don't skyrocket for the average Canadian. Um, um, but lots of questions about whether or not CPI is actually a good measure of inflation because that's basically a basket of certain goods that they check every single month to see, hey, is this basket that I, like I go to the store, I put all these things in the basket, is that more or less than last month? Uh, that's what the CPI is. Uh, but sometimes that data doesn't really include everything. But if that CPI, those numbers don't change, that's exactly what the Bank of Canada is looking at. So um, they may not even step in if we see inflation like we have in assets, uh, things that largely aren't included in that CPI. My advice for everyone though is like I think you've got to be you got to be investing if you haven't started learning about it uh, certainly do some googling do some watch some YouTube videos I have some stuff on my channel but I think it's as long as you're investing money that you don't need right now that you can leave for the long term I think it's far better to have your money in investments than in savings especially in a time when we are seeing um, the potential for these inflation risks. All right, so yes, CPI is computer, consumer price index, exactly, exactly. So I'm gonna, last chance for any final questions before we close up the stream. We're probably gonna close it up in a, in a couple minutes here. Uh, again, you can tag me, tag me uh, with the at Russell Matthews, two TTs uh, and an S at the end of Matthews, and I'll see your question a little bit more clearly. We're gonna take a couple more here before we call it for the stream, but thank you for tuning in and thanks for clicking that like button. I'll do a quick little plug here as well. We've got that uh, Canada Money Mastery course if you're interested in it. The course is always growing. We're adding more and more and more, and as things grow, we're gonna um, slowly increase the price for that. So if you're interested in it, now's a good time to check it out. 45% off with coupon code INVEST. Uh, and you actually, as an early member of the course, get to shape the direction and what gets made first and and what's actually covered in the course so hopefully you can get all the value you need out of something like that um, but some final questions AJ says you got to be in it to win it you, you do you really do high invest high in or high interest savings account Toronto Yeller says it, it's okay for an emergency fund to hold it in a high interest savings account certainly if you need the money short term better to hold it in a high interest savings account than in a checkings account but if you've got money for the long term that you've been saving well a high interest savings account paying you around one percent or less per year, it doesn't even really keep up with inflation. So I would definitely advise to get into some other sort of investing than just holding all your money in a savings account. Sports Entertainment says, so what happens if we do make crypto as our currency? Like how will it work in society? Yeah, these are some questions that we don't have the answers to yet right now. Like people are saying Bitcoin, it's not really a good um, currency, right? Because you can't um, you can't transact with it because the block size is, or the length of time it takes to verify each block is, is quite long, right? But there is thoughts about maybe doing a second layer that does quick transactions so you can actually pay and settle transactions in Bitcoin or in any, uh, any other cryptocurrency and then settle that second layer on the first layer of the of the blockchain so that you actually can transact quickly like if you think about it like this like if you buy something with bitcoin right now well you have to wait like i say like you like at a debit machine you, you'd have to wait 15 minutes there right to to have that transaction verified now that's a big problem for using it as actual functionality people say that bitcoin's not really a currency it's more of a store of value right now similar like a digital gold but certain other certainly other cryptocurrencies with smaller um block like the amount of time between each block being uh, created and verified is, is smaller, well, those could work more transactionally. Alex, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for doing the stream. Great to have a community to build around. Locals, we uh, we may run into at a grocery store. Exactly, a bunch of Canadians hanging out here. That's why I love this channel and why I think that every one, single person here is part of this community. Um, and I'd love to see you in here when we do the live streams and hanging out and commenting on the videos, providing your thoughts. And and if you want to keep the conversation going, we have the Discord channel as well, where we, the conversation is always going uh, day and night. There's a, about a 350, 400 people in there now that always having conversations about investing, about these benefits, questions are answered that's where we're hanging out when we don't have these live streams 
lightning will change things big time for Bitcoin. Yeah, that's what that's what you're saying. The second second layer, exactly, Candice. It could could be an idea. XRP is the fastest and energy saving. And yeah, there's a lot of like I don't have an intense knowledge of XRP and all the ins and outs of it, but certainly it could be answering a, a questions. Yeah, I always like to think what problem is that cryptocurrency solving? Um, how is that going to be used in the future? And I think if you look at it through that mindset and have an understanding of what it's actually trying to do, and if you have belief in it enough, then certainly why, why not uh, own a little bit of it? Ryan Silva says, watch Jerome Powell's answer to it. It'll go through the digital currency ecosystem. Yeah, maybe there's questions about central bank digital currencies. The Bank of Canada right now is doing research on what a central bank digital currency or like a, a Canadian government or not government, but a Bank of Canada uh, digital token or digital currency could look like. But we don't really have details on what that actually is going to be. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. I think we're going to wrap it up right there. If you're just tuning into the stream, as soon as we're done this stream, you can like flip back and you can find out what was said in that press conference. Essentially, new bill being put forward, Bill C-30. Uh, that's going to have all the information about what's actually going to be implemented from the budget. You can have the budget, but it doesn't really mean anything until it's implemented through legislation. And we're going to get that document, it seems like, later today. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, because I'm going to bring you that information once we have access access to it. I'll make a video about it. So hopefully that'll help you out. And I want to take a second to say thank you to everyone for tuning in. Love these live streams. Love the community we're building here. And uh, I appreciate every single one of you for tuning in and creating this Canadian uh, community with me. So I appreciate you. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching everybody. Hope this live stream has helped you out at least a little bit and I'll see you next time.